All you have to do is look at the comments that white people are leaving all over Facebook concerning this Cleopatra thing. She was Greek. She was Macedonian. We know this. How can you not know this? But when they speak, they produce no documentation. And the little bit of documentation that they produce is questionable at best. When the profundity of documentation that is truly erudite, that is truly credentialed and peer-reviewed, that is coming out of Oxford Unity University Press. Can we, can we get that? Coming out of Harvard. I'm sorry? Can we get that, the documentation that you're referring to? About it's the... not right here. It's at my fingertips. What do you okay, want? Okay, please. Yes, whatever. Anything you can give me to prove that Cleopatra was in some... You said it depends, right? That um, people saying that she was Greek, she was this or that. Like, anything at all they can get to prove that maybe she wasn't what people are saying she is. Anything that I can get. I have so much I wouldn't even know where to begin. You sure? Are you sure you're ready for this? I am ready. Okay. It is with Cleopatra's grandfather that uncertainties develop. Although he had two wives of traditional Macedonian background, he seems to have had at least one concubine of uncertain origin, who may have been Cleopatra's grandmother. But this is by no means clear, and some sources indicate she was her husband's sister, and thus pure Macedonian. Assuming, however, that Cleopatra's grandmother was not from the traditional Macedonian Greek stem, the question arises as to just what she was. Sources suggest that if she was not Macedonian, she was probably Egyptian. So by the time of Cleopatra's grandparents, there may have been an Egyptian element in the racial stem. Now, who put that out? Is that from the Sunday Funnies? Is that from the New York Daily Post? Who is that from? What's the Oxford source? University Press. Oh, Oxford University Press. Not some dumb Greek on fucking Facebook or YouTube screaming she was Macedonian. Thinking he's Oxford University Press. This is the arrogance of especially young white people. Actually, it doesn't even, you can't even use age or sex. They're so arrogant, they don't even bother to look at the real literature. They don't even bother to look at the PhD literature. They don't. They're just fucking arrogant. And my heart goes out to educated white people because the one thing you will find about extremely educated white people, they can't stand poor white trash. They can't because they make them look bad. For the same reason, black people can't stand black trash. Do you like black people that make you look bad and look stupid? I'm asking you a question. That make the race look bad? White people are no different. They can't stand the idiots amongst them. The problem is that on both sides, black and white, the idiots will always outnumber those who are actually educated. This is the truth. Okay, one more. I'm gotta... sorry, one more. I gotta get one more because this is this is good. <laughs> you want one more what? One more uh, piece of evidence. Any, anything? Oh, okay, no problem. Or oh, well, whatever you, know you can give. I, I just want to well, know. You didn't bro. think there was a part two? You thought that was the whole thing? Yeah, I know you got bro. I you take your time on, on this research. I don't want I don't want it to show one thing, you know what I'm saying? I want to show all of it, you know. Because I, I know when I'm editing, I'm gonna be doing a lot of research myself and trying to like put some stuff to like all right, I, I, Alan, please do a job. You are from now on the resident reader. Although I no. think we should other people read to get stronger because lazy minds tend to stutter when they read and they put words where they're not. You should read as if your life depends on it and read smoothly as if you were having a conversation. So I think that Ozzy should give it a shot. Let's I'm, go. I'm, I'm pretty lazy. I'm not coming from reading. So I guess I'll, 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 I'll think about and that somebody explains put a whole lot. my head. You hear what he said about him being lazy coming to reading? That explains oh, bro, bro, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take that. Nah, Did nah, I say nah, that he said No, that. I said when it comes to reading, bro, I didn't think it was that important, bro. That's not that serious. <laughs> bro, today we have podcasts, bro. What do I need to read for? I'm not going to be... If I want to read the Bible, I'm going to just listen to it. I'm not going to read it. That's, that's what I meant by lazy, but it doesn't mean that like I don't, I'm not a lazy person or I'm a lazy he's got, intellectual he, or whatever. He's got, a, he's, got, he's got a lot of... He's just talking stuff. shit, bro. He's just talking shit. He's got a lot of Freudian, <laughs> he's got a lot of Freudian shit going on, guys. <laughs> hey, look. You better watch him, guys. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> you better watch him. Anyways, it's possible that Cleopatra's mother was of the traditional Macedonian Greek stock. But this may not be the case. So one may need to look elsewhere for the ethnic background of Cleopatra's mother. Yet, there is only one other ethnic group that produced women of status in contemporary Egypt, the Egyptian religious elite, which in fact had a long history of intermarriage with the who? Ptolemy. Who? They had a long intermarriage with who? Um, with the Ptolem Ptolemaic dynasty. Oh, so that means the native Egyptians had a long history of intermarriage with the Ptolemies, huh? So what does that mm -hmm. mean? That means that the Ptolemies were not fully Macedonian and fully Greek. They were mixed. Yeah. See, they're not telling you this. Mm -hmm. They were mixed. And what's the source oh, the, again? So, so look, so watch this. Watch this. 
at this period, not only were the Ptolemies mixed, but the Egyptians had become mixed because they had been mixing with the Greeks in Egypt, mm -hmm. particularly the upper class Egyptians. They were mixing with them, mm -hmm. right? You got to remember, money don't care about your skin. Mm -hmm. That's a universal truth, always has been and always will be. But even people with money still try to marry up. Right, so marrying up meant one thing for the Ptolemies, where marrying up went, meant something different for the native Egyptians. But each one of them got something that they wanted through these intermarriages. But at the end of the day, what it means is that both lines were mixed, mm. both lines were native Egyptian and Greek, both lines, both the Egyptian side and the Macedonian side, they were both native Egyptian and Greek mixed. So she was mixed literally on both fucking sides. Mm -hmm. mm. Continue to read. I think I'm done, no? No. Um, you just said they intimated oh, yes. the Ptolemies. Yeah, he is a lazy reader. <laughs> so Cleopatra's mother may have been Egypt. Is that it? That's it, I think, right? Yeah. I think this is the, right after the Ptolemy. Okay, guys. yes, yes. So Cleopatra's mother may have been Egyptian. But now we have to prove that um I guess now you have to prove whether or not Egyptians were the true blacks. So that's like another topic, I guess. But obviously we've already got into that. <laughs> that's easy to prove. You ain't that's not a whole night lecture. That's like one picture proves that. Literally one picture proves that. Let me let me see it. I gotta see it. Remember the picture of the of the of the princess with I think you her... showed us. Yeah. <laughs> no have mercy. Hey man, I'm having fun learning, bro. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Watch this. I'm going to share my screen with you, okay? Here we go. Yeah, bro. So you said now we got to prove that the Egyptians were black. Well, at the end of the day, what really matters right now, the most important thing to understand is that, and by the way, that last thing that you read, uh, what's, this, what's the source of that? Oxford. Oxford University Press, correct? Mm-hmm. So you got Oxford University Press saying that her grandmother was most likely Egyptian and her mother was most likely Egyptian. And also that the Ptolemaic line was heavily intermarried with the native Egyptian line. Because mm -hmm. the, the stories that white people, young, ignorant white people like to tell is that she was just Macedonian and the Macedonian line were incestuous. And so therefore there was no, out. it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. They also like to tell you they like to speculate and say that her mother was um, Cleopatra Trefena, who I think was the, the, the sixth, right? Um, there's no proof of that. They know that she was a wife of, of, of Artelis, Ptolemy the 12th, Cleopatra's father. Mm -hmm. But she disappears from the record at just prior to or just at just about Cleopatra's birth. So there's no definitive way to say that she was pregnant and gave birth to that child. So you can't place a factor on something that you can't say. You can't, you can't do it. You might dream about it. You might wish it. You might hope it. But that's it. It's not a fact. What is a fact is that the Ptolemies heavily intermarried with the native um, uh, 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 Egyptians. And they did it for a reason. They did it for religious status because it was a sacerdotal society. It was ruled by religion. Mm -hmm. The Ptolemies knew they could not change that. You can't change the whole psychology of a, of a people. Well, you can, but it's much more easier to manipulate it and manage it and to assume the powerful role in it. And that's what the Ptolemies were about. They are about politics. Mm -hmm. And in ancient Kemet, well, not, it wasn't Kemet at this time, it was Egypt. In Egypt, religion was the politics of the country. And the Ptolemaic line was very sensitive to this. And this is the reason why even Alexander himself had himself portrayed as a pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Replete throughout the country. They call him a Greek and a Macedonian, but he called himself the son of an African god, the son of Amun. Even had himself portrayed as, as the son of Amun on coins, on numismatic evidence. I can show you there's nothing that I'm telling you that I can't show you with the click of a button. Nothing. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you is that most of the people arguing back and forth, they don't, they're historically illiterate. 
They don't know. They don't have enough details, and they can't substantiate the things that they're saying with peer-reviewed documentation. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that comes out my mouth ever that cannot be substantiated by peer-reviewed documentation. Not only that, the Macedonians were not Greeks. You didn't know that. Genetically, they were not Greeks. Genetically, the Greeks weren't Greeks. They all came out of Africa, and they all descended from Africans. They just mixed. Mm -hmm. They just mixed with other whites that came in later. The Dorians, people like the Dorians. So you have different epics of Greece, right? You have the old epic, which would be the Achaeans, um, uh, the Dodonians, uh, I think the Dodonians, but definitely the Achaeans, uh, the Argonauts, and, and, and other different demographics, right? Later on, you get, um, or, or one you should really look at, the Pelasgians, right? So the Pelasgians are considered the true natives of the Greek Isles, mm. right? But the Greeks themselves would have looked at them as barbarians, that's a way of saying that they were probably super black. They were like black, just regular black people, right? And what you see, there's a hidden story of race behind all of this. And white people, especially young white people, have been given the comfort of the illusion of their fantasies about racial history. And, they, and so therefore they speak to you condescendingly with arrogance when they don't know anything about, how are you going to be the last group of humanity to think that you know everything about all other humanity that came before you? Does that even make sense? That's like you trying to tell your mother you know more about her than she does when you weren't even around when she was a child. Does that make sense? No. That's what white people do. How are you going to tell us who we are? We tell you who you are. We were on this planet when you didn't exist. We saw things transpire on this planet before you were considered a human. Most people, most I gotta say, most centers of civilization thought that white people were too savage and too barbaric to ever be educated. Did you know that? That that's documented? Did you know that? I'm asking you a question, Adi. Did you know that? One more time. <laughs> I'm asking you, did you know that most ancient civilizations? thought that white people were too savage and too barbarian to ever be educated. Did you know that? I mean, you're making a claim and you're saying that I know that. I mean, I've you never heard it. of the claim, but yeah, I, I, yeah no. I, I mean, I, I mean, is, is what, what, where, where is this from? Like, what, what is this like? Okay, first of all, before we get into that, I, mean, I want to talk about the, you said you have some evidence for um how, but one picture you're going to show is how Egyptians, um black people were the Original Egyptians, whatever. Oh, gosh. Okay, it's like taking candy from a baby. Here we go. Means the notes. And then after this, we're going to wrap up. Just, just uh, in the next 15 minutes or so. Just because, okay, uh, cool beans, I'm cool beans. Boys. All right. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, uh, here we go. Um, yeah, let's use this. All right. Mind sharing it and then visible share. The oh yeah, I'm about to share my screen right now. Oh, that works. That works too. Yeah, that works. I have to share my screen because this is on PowerPoint. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen so you can see it, and I'm going to show you these white people. These are, I'm about to show you white people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I show them to you, yes, I want you to tell me how white they look. Okay, I want you to tell me how super uber white they look. Can you see my screen? Still loading. Yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. Hold on one second. Do you see these white people? Yeah. Yeah, we're huh? looking at them. You see we're these white people? Yep. Yeah. Look how white they are, Ozzy. <laughs> they look white to you, Ozzy? It's a yes or no question. Do they look white to you? Well, considering the fact that it says black three times on the screen and they have a uh, black pigmentation outside. Oh, I, I forget about. Hold on. If you need this, if you need, hold on one second. All right, all right, fine, fine. My fault. Forget about the letters and then and the, the if words. If you need to look at words, <laughs> then brother, you are beyond any help. They, that look, I can give they you. look black, so therefore they're not white. Yes. When a cop sees you in the street and shoots you, he said, oh, well, the, the words didn't say that he was black. Well, I just, 
it's like, come on, bro. Reality check. Don't have don't have cognitive dissonance now because white people have got your head so messed up that you can't even recognize a black person when you're looking at one because that's bad. Can you see my screen? No, no, no. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, I oh, I it's there now. It's there now. Yeah, All right, so Adi, tell me about these black people you see. Um, I mean, these white people. They look dark skinned. The one on the left. Looks so who's the first skin. one? Who's the first one? Tutmos. Tutmos what? The third. Bye. Right? Who's the one in the middle? Taye. Queen T. Oh. She's a paramount queen. 18th mm. dynasty, New Kingdom. Who's the person from the third intermediate period? The Jed. The Jed. Jed Jehuti He okay. was a priest. He came from a whole family of priests. Priests were the upper crust of society. There are no poor people. These are not slaves. But you know what these Egyptians tell you? They tell you that black people were slaves in Egypt. Do these look like slaves to you? No. What makes you think you owe them respect when they lie to your face like that? What could compel a decent person, a re respectable person, to look in your face and lie? Do you know what their new lie is that they're telling people? Now they're telling people that we photoshopped this. <laughs> This is what they're telling people. This is on the wall in their own country, and they're telling you we photoshopped it. That tells you how sick they are. Egyptians are racially sick people. They are mentally ill people. Do you understand what I'm telling you? They are racially mentally ill. And if you don't understand that, there's a whole lot of other things you don't understand about life. Do you understand that? They are racially mentally ill. Let's see what else we got on here, because I got a lot on here. This was her husband. Does he look Russian to you? No. That's her husband. I'm in Hotep the Third. That's her husband. Does he look Russian to you? No. What does he look to you? Does he look Chinese? No. Does he look Irish? No. Does he look Korean? No. What does he look like? Black. Black. Oh, they got you scared to say it. That's how shook they got you. That's her son behind her on the right, Akhenaten. Does he look white to you? No. If that's his mommy and his daddy, what do you think he is? Black. Black. Do we have to argue that? No. no. I'm asking you a question, Ozzy. No. They didn't teach you shit. They left you stupid on purpose. <laughs> and most people are proud of their idiocy. This is a modern Egyptian all the way on the right. This is Queen T and her grandson, Tut Unk Amen, King Tut. Do they look, does this look like their descendant over here? No. Nope. I'm asking you a question. Does this guy on the right look like their descendant? No. Nope. Nope. So I'm curious. So, so if this, so, so if, let me ask, so let me ask you a question. Does she look Russian? No. Does she no. look Chinese? Mm -mm. No. Why? Why are the responses so slow and so inaudible? I'm white just trying to be really loud. No, they're not. I'm I don't respect. To... To, I don't. Let's understand something. I don't respect timidity when it comes to truth. You either respect truth or you don't. If you respect truth, answer the damn question. Does she look? Like she's Czechoslovakian? No, she no. does not. Does she look like she's um uh uh, uh from Latvia? No. no. All right. Does King Tut look like he's Russian? No. Nah. Does he look Italian? No. Nah. I know he's he a big like seller. Okay. Does he look like a modern Egyptian? No. No. Just say what the fuck it is. And don't be scared. Look, this is. Ramesses the third. What color is his skin? Black. Black. These are their gods. Did they give their gods white skin like these crackers over here? No. No. What color did they make their gods? Same color. Black. 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 So what color did what? So to an Egyptian, God was what color? Black. Black. And by the way, they were not Egyptians. Okay? King Tut was not an Egyptian. Queen T was not an Egyptian. This is an Egyptian. So we got to get the language right. That's how they colonize them, by language. Mm. They keep you trapped in their language. 
so that they can define reality. You have to throw their language in the garbage or put it in context. Egypt is not an African word. It is a Greek word from Aegyptos. Okay? It actually comes from the um, Mycenaean linear script. The same people in Mesopotamia use that script. And they use the same term, Aegyptos. It is what you call an it is what you call an exoname. That means it is a name that comes from foreigners and outsiders. It is an exoname. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the opposite? Do you know what the opposite of an exoname is, Ozzy? Uh, endonym. Very good. Yes, sir. It is an endonym. He oh he did he did. <laughs> I'm gonna play to you. Hey, if you are gonna roast me when I when I fuck up, then I'm fine. Nah, there I'm you go. I give you your props. I'm proud of you. You got that. Yes, it is an endonym. The endonym for this country is not Egypt. The endonym for this country was called Kemet. Mm -hmm. Kemet. Mm -hmm. That was not the only name. They had other names. Tawi, the two lands. Tameri, the, the beloved land. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Kemet. Kemet does not mean black land. I hate when people say that stupid shit. Kemet does not mean black land. What color does this man look like to you? He look like he's Chinese? Huh? Yeah. If you come to Africa and you see somebody this fucking dark and you've never seen a black person before, what are you going to look like to you, Ozzy? He's going to just gonna look like something that ain't human or some shit. You're going to be like, wait, what? Why do you think I look like that? Hey, Ozzy, what race does that man look to you? He's black. These people on the wall, what color do they look to you? Black. Black, 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 black. Now you got bald black men. I don't see no bald modern Egyptians running around today. Where they at? You walk to any black neighborhood, you're going to see bald black men everywhere, young and old. That's always been our thing. We do bald. These people on the wall, what color they look to you, Alan? Black. And if it wasn't so important for people who think it's not important, if it wasn't so important, then why are they fighting so? Why number one, why did they have to steal the identity in the first place? And then two, why are they freaking out because you've come to reclaim your identity? Why? So ultimately, like the argument is that, like, um, even there. Hey, yo, Ozzy, be quiet. What? What? Tell me what color these people are. Hey, man, we're gonna keep doing this over and over again. Black. What? Uh, but hold on. If they can scream white over and over again, how dare you think you have the right to get tired when you're just getting started? You better go freaking invest in a powerful bullhorn so you can scream this, scream this from the top of your lungs. Do you know why? There's a reason why they stole this particular identity from you. But in your genius state, you can't tell us why it's so important that they stole it from us. It's, they stole it for a reason. They didn't steal it because it was just a matter of convenience. They rather tell you all of this stuff about black people. And when they see stuff like this, they don't know what to say. They say, we photocopy this. It's there. Here's, and here's the crazy part. If you go to Egypt today, it's there right now on the walls. That's how weird they are. These people are Egyptians are racial weirdos. These people are not Egyptians, okay? That country was not called Egypt. It was called Kemet. They called themselves the Remet Kemet, the Remetch Kemet, the people of Kemet. Remetch, everybody say Remetch. Remetch. Kemet. Remetch Kemet. Remetch Kemet. Who's that laughing? I want to know who that was laughing when I said it. Who was that, Adi? Yeah, because it feels like we're in the classroom. Nah, you laughing. You know why you laughing? Let me tell you why you laughing. Let me stop for a second. Oh, damn. You laughing because they got you so comfortable in that white identity that you amass for yourself that when you start speaking your own stuff and when you when you get close up on it, it makes you uncomfortable. You don't even know how to feel. You understand what I'm saying? That's your language. That's an African language. They try to put the term Asiatic on it. There's nothing Asiatic about it. 
the language, the morphology, the morphology, the syntax of the language, it's African. 100% African. Does it have other loan words and things in it or what we call calcs? Yes, it has calcs. All languages have calcs. But Egypt, ancient Egyptian substantially is an African language, period. And I can show you the most white racist European professors saying it in print. It is an African language. So when I tell you to say Remet Kemet, say that shit. Stick your chest out and say Remet Kemet. Remet Kemet. The people of Kemet. And Kemet does not mean black land. That is a lie. It is one. It is an Egyptian racist lie. It is a, and they got it from white Europeans. You will understand the greatest racist weapons that Egyptians use. They got it from white Europeans. They got it from their white European brothers. That's a better way of saying it. And sisters, because they are their brothers and sisters. Don't. Mm. Don't make any mistake about it. Egyptians are mentally, they are racially mentally ill. And you have to understand the seriousness of that. Their identity is an imagined identity. That's why they're up in arms and why they're freaking out. They, look, how long has black people's identity been under assault? You see us freaking out? Becoming all undone? They disrespect us every day. In every way, movies, film, you name it, print, you name it, blackface, you name it. The first major Hollywood film, what was that? Birth of a Nation? Everybody was in blackface. Black people did what? Just went on about their business, right? Why? Yeah. Because we knew who we was. Even, even when we didn't know who we were, we knew who we wasn't. Right? So if black people are so wrong, why are these Egyptians freaking out? Why are they losing it and becoming undone? You know why? Because that imagined, manufactured, fake identity that they have is all they have. They don't have nothing else. Everything that they got was given to them from the outside or taken by them from the inside. Everything. And that includes Islam. That includes Islam. The only thing I would give them credit for, truthfully speaking, the only thing I would give them credit for, in my opinion, in my learned opinion, I consider them how can I put this because you have to understand Coptic history Coptic history is deep and most people don't know it they've never studied it I've studied Coptic history <laughs> in depth okay Coptic history is deep the first thing that you need to know about the Coptic language is the language itself has a very deep history. Do you know who the cops are, Ozzy? The who cops. the Egyptian cops are? The cops. C-O-P-T-S. Cops. The Coptic Church. Nope. They are Christians in Egypt. Mm. They also, the term cop also has an ethnic context. Mm -hmm. They are, they are um, what you call... Um, Uh, what's the word I want to use? There's a word for it. Ooh. It's when groups seriously intermarry. That's the Coptic community. They mm -hmm. don't really marry outside of their group. So because of that, um, there's a certain term for that. I forgot what it's called. Endogamous? It's endogamous, yes. It's an endogamous group. Okay? Thank you, Alan. So, <laughs> Alan, this is his name from now on. <laughs> okay, Ayan. So, um, so the point I'm making is this, 
Yes, I changed everything that is white. Mm. I restored it to something better. Right? Why should it be Allen? For what? When Alan is so much more, he's so much more. So why shouldn't his name be so much Can more? I ask, I know you were just kind of joking with the Alan thing, um, changing everything to white, but um, Oh, you thought I was joking when I called him Alan? No, 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 no. What you just said about like changing everything that is white. Like, is that like No, I'm not joking. I'm I'm serious about it. I know, that. I know. And that's what I'm asking. Like, is this the reason why you, you're so like fiery and like um like passionate about this? Because like, no, I'm like fiery. I'm, let me tell you why I'm fiery. You know why I'm fiery? Because I was born in 1967. What do you know about 1967? Not a wow. damn thing because you were nowhere around. I was born before America went to the moon, before they landed on the moon. Do you understand that? When I was born, Martin Luther King was still walking around, talking and speaking and giving lectures. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Do you understand what I'm telling you? When I was born, people like me were being bused to integrate the schools of North America. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Because my first years in schools were doing that, all right? Integrating the schools. Right? I am walking history. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not some idiot like Candace Owens or this other chick from Prager U sitting here thinking that they know something about history. They are historically illiterate and they are morons. Absolute morons. They got some good points. They, there are some things that they get, but they've been too co-opted by white, by white males. A black woman's favorite coveted prize. A white male. Yes. Okay? Not because he's white, but because she associates him with power and access. That's why. And that is the number one aphrodisiac for the black woman. Power and access. Mm. Okay. Oh yes, I'll tell you about. Um, uh, uh, is it just a is that, is that a black woman thing or is that like a woman thing in general? No, it, it, no, it, it's it's a woman thing. But you have to remember, black women are the first women on the planet, so they've been they've, they've that that program has been running in them longer, so it's more in them. You understand? Yes. It's more in them. See, I when you, when you talk, I know what you mean because I know like where you're speaking from. But when, when people perceive what you're saying, it, they're, they're thinking in a contemporary sense, and you're thinking in like an Egyptian like history story. No, sense. no, I'm not. A, I'm not so, thinking any. No, like, no, they're I, I, thinking. I was confused when they, the same way he was confused too. So about what? About the black woman. When you said like black women are like, if you didn't explain that, I would have been like, wait, what? What is he talking about? Like black women, um, are ever an aphrodisiac for like. Of power and um... power is an aphrodisiac. No, no, no. You said oh. something about like how. Yeah, I said I said that power and access are uh, are an aphrodisiac for black women, such that yes. to the point that it's more um it's more inherent in their genetics. If you just look at epigenetics, it's more inherent in the in their genetics. They have been vying and fighting for power longer than all other females longer than asian women and longer than european women you have to understand something black women had rights on this planet when white women were still the property of their husbands you understand white women were the shadow slave property of their husbands in greece and other places they're trying to rewrite history now to make it appear as if greek women uh, actually had far more independence and and, and self-reliability which is a lie the reality and the reason why we know it's a lie is because when we look at the historical record, it's spoken to in depth. If you look at primary sources, when you look at the primary, see what happens is you get a lot of revisionists that come along that try to rewrite history to suit the contemporary palette to make it sound more palatable to people today. So it fits in a contemporary narrative. When you do that, you betray history, right? Just look at it for what it is. Take it for what it's worth. It's like Aristotle saying, Cowardice is witnessed to by people who are too black, such as the Ethiopians and the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And it's also witnessed to by those who are too white, like women. True courage lies between the two. Well, the only thing between black and white can be biracial. That is cold language. When Apollodorus is telling you that a king named Egyptus conquered the country of the black-footed ones and named the country Egypt, that is a cold way of saying that the natives of Egypt was black. It's cold. Mm -hmm. But people are too fucking stupid to learn anything. They're fucking stupid. Do you understand what I'm telling you? People are fucking stupid. 
and fucking stupid people buy into that fucking stupid shit. You understand what I'm telling you, Ozzy? They're fucking stupid. Get used to it. They don't know history. They're historically illiterate and they're fucking stupid. Is that how you want to end this off? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, man. It's like it really, really fucking gets me, bro. Know, it really I gets know. me. Because I got to live with it every day. I got to live and watch all of this expended energy of stupid people pontificating on things they don't know anything about. Nothing. Nothing. And white people are the, are the guiltiest of it. They're so fucking arrogant. I'm going to tell you how arrogant they are. Here's the here's the great one of their greatest transgressions. They religified history. I'll say it again. They religify, not even let me let me let me rewind that. They religify tradition about history. You know what the problem with that is? The problem with that is that they've never been taught to make the distinction between tradition and history. They're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so if you're coming from a place like Macedonia, Albania, or Greece, these are third world countries. They don't tell you that. When you think of third world countries, you think of, they want you to think black, all black countries are third world countries. Eastern Europe has third world countries. Mm-hmm. South America. These, these places are not part of Western Europe. They're barely part of the European Union. Be just barely. Give me an example. Did you just bring it up just now? I think I think you did, but I wasn't paying attention. My bad. It's you know I don't even want to go that route. Okay, I don't even want to. I don't. I don't want to digress in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Go ahead. Finish up. Right. Finish your point. Finish your point. Um. So you know what I do want to do because I have a few interesting things over here. I just want to see what I want to cause. Uh, you might see something that you're not supposed to be. I do want to show you one thing. Hold on one second. Because you said before, mm -hmm. you assume the Greeks were white. Now, I showed you what Aristotle said about where true courage lies. He said it lies between black and white. The only thing between black and white is biracial. Okay? So, we know that he is extolling the character of biracial people and denigrating blacks and whites. Okay? So, now... Tell me when you can see, can you see my, my, my PowerPoint? Yes. Yep. Okay. You see it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Let me show you what Aristotle said. They love to talk that IQ shit about black people not having an IQ. Okay. Let's see something. Okay. Damn it. I hate when it does that. That is so freaking annoying. It really is. All right. Uh, Hold on one second. Hey, can you see my um, PowerPoint? Yes. yes. All right. Um, Alan, would you please read the title of this book here? The Politics by Aristotle. By, by Aristotle. Aristotle. And this is what? Book 7? Note 7. Verse, note 7, right? This is yep. published by Penguin Classics. I'm sure we all know Penguin Classics. Translated by T.A. Sinclair, page 269. What did Aristotle say? Please read that out loud for the white audience. The races that live in cold regions and those of Europe are full of courage and passion, but somewhat lacking in skill and brain power. Skill and what? Brain power. What did he say about white people? They lack what? They're dumb. Skill and brain power. Forget skill. They lack what? Brain power. Brain power. That's Aristotle, a Greek. The races that live in cold regions and those of Europe are full of courage and passion, but somewhat lacking in skill and brain power. Maybe you're talking about the white. Wait, but you put the you put. I mean, from what it seems, I I know you. This is like just uh, imagery, but isn't that um the Vikings right there with the with the uh, I'm with stupid thing? Like when you're referring to when he's referring to people cold regions of those in Europe, you're you're assuming that he's referring to like the. Like I mean, obviously Vikings were like more like Scandinavian countries and stuff like that. Like, are you are, is that is that what you're referring to when you say like these you, those people in Europe? Is, is that is that what he's referring to? Or is that what you're referring to? Ozzy, let me ask you a question. I don't understand psychologically. Something something's wrong with you, brother. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but you might be tired or something. But like your your axions and your dendrites are not firing the way that they should. Like this is real basic shit, bro. Aristotle. The Greek philosopher, Alexander's teacher, made a statement. The races that live in cold regions and those of Europe, 
the races that live in Europe. He's talking about, do I have to, I have to literally break it down to you that he's talking about white people? Like I have to tell you that? I'm asking you a question, Ozzy. I just don't like to, um, I don't Ozzie, know, I feel like. About, Ozzie, there's something wrong with you, brother. Hold on one second. Hold hey, on. yo, listen, uh, listen, oh, uh, no. you're, you're, you're extrapolating a lot from certain things that are being said. I'm not saying he's saying Ozzie, that or he's Ozzie, not saying that. Know what, I'm just taking his word for face value. I don't know what they did to you, but you're like that dude from Get Out. Like, there's something in you that prevents you from seeing something as it is or hearing something as it said. I don't know what that is, brother, but you're going to have to work through that and work on that because it's real serious. It's like a parasite in you, right? I'm not extrapolating anything. How dare you use the word extrapolating when I fucking just read from what the man wrote? I read what the man wrote. Reading comprehension requires inference. He implicated, inferred, and stated the races that live in Europe. Black people are not living in Europe, not in his time. There's only one group of people living in Europe at that time. White people. I don't have to extrapolate a damn thing. Do you know what a synonym is? Two words that mean the same thing. European. European does not mean people that look like you or me or Alan or him. Accept it for what it is. They have no problem with accepting. Let me show you how sorry that, that disposition is. How disgusting it is. White people have no hesitation and no problem with saying black people have a low IQ. They'll shove it in your face all over social media. You're here groveling at their fucking presence to not say what Aristotle said. How dare you? Where's your black self-respect? What the hell is wrong with you? The man said it. That's documented history. That's a documented record. Black and white. And because they didn't teach it to you, you're stuck on stupid in the Bible. And I'm telling you the truth. This is the facts. You don't have to like them. I'm telling you. These people will not hesitate to tell you you are stupid and that the documentation shows it. They write books after books on it. Bell curve and more. I just pointed out to you their greatest Greek philosopher, Aristotle, said that they're fucking stupid. And you're sitting here trying to be an apologist for white people. How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. And I mean that from the bottom of my soul. Check yourself, Carlton. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> You almost got me until you said Carlton. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but, 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 but what I said is true. I can laugh about it, but it's true. Alain knows it's true. He knows it's true. You should be scared that something's going on inside you that is so embedded that you can't see something for what it is. I didn't add one word to that sentence. I did not add one word to that I sentence. Know. I was... I probably was just being a you know you were, you, were, you were playing white person's advocate. You were being an apologist for white people. It's what you've been trained to do. It is look, 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 look. It is what you have been trained and socialized to do. Or you are not a decent person, or you are not a this that. You know what that Egyptian girl said? She said, put a gun to their brains and don't worry about morality. That's what she said. She spoke for all Egyptians, she didn't speak for herself. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Mm -hmm. Get off of your Jesus crackpot and come to reality. Smell the chessboard. The number one sport on this planet is race. You're not even in the game. You're not even a fucking spectator. You're still trying to figure out how to get to the goddamn stadium if you even want to go. Okay? And that's fine. That's okay. But for those of us who are in the game and who are in the heat of battle, check yourself. All right, really check yourself because if I'm showing you something and it's and here's the part that pisses me off. I can see if I just said it out of my fucking out of my ass. I can see if I just said it out of thin air. Alan, did I or did I not go through the trouble of securing the documentation so that you could reference it for yourself? Did I or did I not? You did. Did I show the author? Yes. Yeah, did I, I give the I page? Know. I know. Did I give the I translator? Know. I know. I know. The people, the reason that people come to me and pay me the money that I get paid is because I, I give them the sources. I never say believe anything I said. Yes, yes, yes. Never. I don't ever ask you to believe one thing that I say. I don't deal with beliefs. I never tell you what I believe. 
I don't share my beliefs with people because you can't profit from my beliefs. You can profit from what I know, my knowledge. Okay, when you go get a tooth taken out, do you care what the, what the dentist believes or do you go to him for what he knows? What he knows. If you, got, if you need a heart surgeon, if you need a heart surgeon, do you care if the heart surgeon is a is a Muslim or a Christian or a Buddhist or atheist? Yeah. Do you care? Do you really care? Mm -mm. It helps keep me alive. That's all I care about. That's all you care about. This is what I mean. I say, get your head out of your ass, bro. Get your head. Look, look, bro. Look, I know it sounds like a certain way. I don't mean it like that, but you got to really understand. I'm trying to like shake you out of a stupor. You know what a stupor is? You've been lulled to sleep. And the number one person that will lull you to sleep, no, no, forget what I'm about to tell you. Well, don't ever forget what I'm about to tell you. A young man's worst enemy is his mother. Don't you ever forget that. She will make your thinking weak. Do you understand that? She doesn't do it because she hates you. She does it to keep you alive, to keep you in your place, to keep you humble and timid in the world that's trying to kill you and take you out just for existing. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And she thinks that by you being a goody two-shoes and nobody's going to do anything to you. This is not how the real world works. Okay? The real world works like this. There is the object. It's on the list. Neutralize it. Period. You have no say-so of who puts you on the list or who doesn't. You know, did you have say so on the census as to who's black and who's not? Did you have say so on any government policy? You didn't have say so in shit. You're barely lucky you got say so on what pair of sneakers you get. Your decision ain't, ain't this like monstrous worldwide decision that affects and impacts all these people. Okay, so what I'm trying to I'm trying to give you a reality check. I'm showing you something that's documented, and let me show you how deep it gets. Because uh, I think you can really appreciate this. I put that quote on Facebook. Do you know what Facebook did? What did they do? Facebook put me in Facebook jail for about five days and said that that post went against the rules of Facebook. Yeah. Now, Egyptians and white people are posting the most disrespectful, disgusting shit about black people. Facebook leaves it up. Like that, that one study that shows uh, different IQ scores between like black people, Asians, uh, white people, etc. And no, colleges. I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about disrespectful shit. This, this straight disrespect. Disrespect. Let me show you what I'm talking about so you can get an idea. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. This is what an Egyptian said. Gehad Hashem. Shaka most, even if your words are correct, because I posted that stuff about Cleopatra that you saw, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that her mother is Egyptian. This does not mean that she is a Negro. Okay? So they still call us Negroes. That tells you where Egyptians are in their minds racially. They're still in 1961. They are still in Jim Crow era. That's how they see us. That she is not a Negro. What the fuck is a Negro? I don't know what a Negro is. What is that? That's a word a white person made up. I don't know what that is, right? It's a Portuguese word. I'm not Portuguese, so I don't use it, right? Egypt does not have Negroes in the first place. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to Aswan in the south of the country, and they said Egypt does not have Negroes in the first place. Then he said the darkest color of the Egyptian skin is the burgundy color, not the black Negro. The man from the south of Egypt, look at his complexion. He is not a Negro. Other than that, in the Egyptian civilization, there is the golden color and the green color in the statues. Does this mean that there are people of golden or green color? This is the kind of shit these racially sick people say. How many Negroes did I show you guys tonight in Egypt? A lot. That's how racially sick they are. Why didn't Pierce show that shit? Huh? I'm asking you a question. No, no. Stop it. Oh, well, stop sharing. Yeah, there you go. Why, did, why didn't Pierce show that? That's the kind of shit they say. There are no Negroes in Egypt. All of these black people in Upper Egypt. All of these black people in Upper Egypt. I can show you black people on video 
from Egypt right now on camera saying, yes, I'm black. I've always been yeah. black. And they're black. They're like you and me. Mm -hmm. But these disgusting Egyptians live in a racial fantasy. They are sick. They are racially sick people. There is no talking nice to them. There is no being friends with them. They are sick. And the sickest one of, of them all is Zahi Hawass. They are sick. And you better understand the danger of this whole thing going back and forth between black people and Egyptian. Mm. Do you know why they are so scared of this conversation? It, um... First of all, black people in Egypt are not even allowed to have this conversation. Think about that. Do you know what would happen to you as a black person in Egypt if you started trying to have this conversation? Get arrested. I you probably be killed. I see the Nubians. Some of the, I see the Nubians trying to do it, and I give them a lot of respect. But the Egyptians have no respect for Nubians. They look at Nubians and say, "We're white people here. Look at us." You heard that? What that Egyptian said there? We have no Negroes in Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's deep. <clears throat> That's deep. That's very deep. We have no Negro. Look, and Mr. Apologist for white people. They're telling you they got no Negroes in Egypt. Yeah, you. Look in the mirror. Accept who you are. Right? You have what's called, there's a word for it. What's that word? Um, uh, it's, it is, it's cognitive dissonance. When, when, when truth is spoken to power in context of race, you get uncomfortable. You feel as if someone is. Be, you feel you feel as if someone is being unrighteously shortchanged, and if some and, and if there is some type of slighted thinking at hand, as if a person can't be in their full presence of mind, fully informed, and speak in such terms. That's to your detriment, not to mine. It's to your detriment, not to my own. These people are racially sick to say the things that they say. I showed you content from Oxford University Press speaking about the ambiguity of her paternal ancestry, her maternal ancestry, and the general ancestry of the Ptolemies. None of that said anything about being pure Greek or Macedon. But all you will have is a litany of white people and Egyptians dying on the hill of her being Greek and Macedonian because they are racially sick and highly uneducated. We underestimate the uneducation of white people globally. We think all white people all over the world go to Harvard and Yale and Oxford and the Sorbonne. No, nothing could be further from the truth. The average white person is just as dumb and as stupid as the average black person. And there's a lot of dumb black people out there. All you got to do is watch social media, the stupid shit they say. Do you know how many stupid ass black people are running around social media right now saying, well, yeah, she was Greek. We shouldn't be, you know, she was 100% massive. No, she the fuck she was not. If you took time to read Oxford University Press, if you took time to read, um, what's her name, PhD, let me show you something. I got look. I know you in a bunch. Let me show you something, bro. Since you really want to see some shit, I'm, let me show you something. Me, give me all the evidence you want, man. Come on. All right, let me yeah. let me show you something, bro. Hold on. Watch this. Let me let me let me share this with you. Um, I'm gonna go to. I have so many ones I can use. Oh, we'll use this one. Here we'll go. Here we go. Hold on one second. We're gonna go here. Let's go to uh, means and captions. No, ancient Kemet photos. Yeah, I think means. Let's do means and captions. Here we go. Let me let me show you something, bro. Here we go. Okay. We're gonna go to Dr. Sally Ann Richardson, PhD. Okay. I'm talking PhD. You know what PhD is, right? Yep. Let's try to figure out. Hold on, hold on. What the hell? Oh, my bad. I didn't grab the whole link. I was like, what the hell? Link don't fail me now. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to share my link, my, my screen so you can see. All right? Yes. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, that that uh, 
the book, the lynching photography book without sanctuary, that stuff is not right. You got it? Yeah, I was, yeah it's not good. You, you looking at it now? I was, but I yeah, I have it. It, it, it. It's something you need to look at so you can understand the nature of this country that we, we all came up in, okay? That I grew up in, okay? Let me close this hole here. All right, Um, quick question. Uh, oh, let me... Okay, great, you can see it. Okay, so matter of fact, let me do one even better than that. Okay, how's that? Are we good? Yep. All right. Um, Alan, can you help us out? This is from Cleopatra in Egypt. Dr. Sally Ann Richardson, PhD. Um, can you please um, read it from the top? All right. Uh, starting from anyone or the title two? Title. The whole thing. From Cleopatra, Black and Beautiful by Dr. Sally Ann Ashton, PhD. 1.1, a 21st century view. Anyone working on Cleopatra will frequently be asked two questions on the subject, namely, was Cleopatra beautiful and was Cleopatra black? The latter most commonly expressed in the Eurocentric form of Cleopatra wasn't really black, was she? Although these questions are bound by modern expectations, they are relevant to Cleopatra as a historical figure and deserve further consideration in the context of this book. The simple answer to both questions with regard to Cleopatra is that we do not know whether she was beautiful and black, unattractive and white, or a combination of any of those modern concepts. We do not have the body to indicate her race through testing DNA. Did you hear that? Yep. Okay, now let's see who Dr. Sally Ann Richardson is very quickly. Dr. So, so we can see if she's Afrocentric. Because they love throwing that word around. Sally Ann Ashton, here she goes. All right, let's see who she is. Dr. Sally Ann Ashton, right? Oh, here she is. Does that look like an Afrocentric to you? Nope. Yes or no? Does that look like an AO? Ozzy, does she look like an Afrocentric nah, to you? Nah. Okay, I'm just asking. Because she's had her hand involved with all of this black Cleopatra stuff, and they're leaving her out of it. Here's her book right here, Cleopatra in Egypt. Okay? But they want to tell you it's Afrocentrics and African Americans that are making all of this up. I don't have nobody in my family named Dr. Sally Ann Richardson. She's not related to me. She's a white woman. So why they not getting mad at white people, the, the Egyptians? Why they only want to talk to they want to they only want to talk smack about black people? Why? Because we are easy target. We don't know how to defend ourselves. We don't know how to hit them books and open up the books and say you are lying, Egyptian hoe. Period. And All just right. tell them the truth about it and be comfortable with it. Boy, your boy's been a snooze off, so let me just wrap it up real quick. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man, this was this was obviously as always. This is just brilliant. Um, I don't know I'm how much. I don't know how you have so much time to spend on uh, this research and all that. But hey, I I, I really commend you because a lot of people. I'm mean, probably not honest. My dad's probably the only person that I know that actually spends time reading, and he loves reading. Like he will read if he gets a job, he will read the book from start to finish like five times over. So like, it's rare to see someone that actually cares about like learning. And my dad and you are probably the only two people that I see nowadays that really cares about like the knowledge and stuff like that. But hey man, as always, you know, I respect, you know, you coming on here and telling us like it is, like you're not afraid to say it, say whatever's on your mind. And you know? I feel like there's so much more we can take from this that I feel like if we can go on, on and on and on and on. Probably maybe like eight hours. One last thing. Look at that. I'm gonna show you one last thing oh. to freak you out. <laughs> show you one last thing to freak you out. One thing, come on, okay. one thing. Okay, come on, come on. One thing. I, I I was gonna save this from my channel, but I'm gonna share it with you to show you how much they they play you. Hold on one second. I'm gonna show you how <laughs> they play you. I was gonna save this from my channel, but I'm gonna share it with you. Yeah, we get that sneak peek, that preview. Oh yeah. Okay. Alan. Yes. Um. Would you please read that? From the very HLA. top, what does it say up here? <clears throat> National Library, NIH. No, NIH, what is the NIH? National Institute of Health, right? Yes. I am presume, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And in the, uh, what is this? National Library of Medicine. See yes. that? Hold on, hold on. Right, National Center for Biotechnology Information. Do you see that? Yes. PubMed. 
All right. This is the and this is dot gov. You see this? This mm -hmm. is an official scientific, scientific literature. Yes. Exactly. You see yep. that? Yep. Read that title. HLA genes in Macedonians and the Sub-Saharan origin of the Greeks. I ain't got nothing else to say. Period. In the discussion. Mm. Yeah. See that. <laughs> no way. No way. No. No way. He did I think he meant to. Turn off the screen share and he clicked the <laughs> leave the call and I put it. Yeah. Leave the call. Imagine he just dropped the mics and goes just like that. <laughs> oh, God. Man. <laughs> I think I said that at 11. I think it was, I think it said either 11 45 or 12 45. We're going to head out. I don't know how we ended up at 123, but it's one, bro. If he comes back and then we can end it off. Or I'll give it like five minutes if he's not back. We'll just. <laughs> I'll text you yeah. or something. Here we gotta go. <sighs> I'm gonna text him. Was that a mic drop? Oh, he's here. Oh. G G G G. <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, I'm back. Hey, yo, yep. did you see that? Yeah, I saw, on, saw that. All right, what what did it say? The sub-Saharan origin of who? The Greeks and Macedonians. Macedonians. See, they don't want you to see that. They don't want to talk about that. I just texted you saying, was that a mic drop? I thought you just, that was like your final statement. I know, I thought about it. I, just, that that probably went out with, <laughs> I said, that probably went out with a mic drop feel. But nah, I was so, I was so ant. Because I've been keeping that to myself for the longest. I'm like, yo, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hit him with it. Yeah. 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 How come they don't talk about that? They love, you know, their favorite word to insult us is sub-Saharan? Mm-hmm. That's their favorite word to insult us. And I'm going to prove to you it's an insult. Right? If they're sub-Saharan, what is the opposite of sub? Par. I don't know. What is the opposite of sub? Um, above? Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like chronology, I don't know. Whatever the opposite is. Pro. pro look, hey, look. Whatever the opposite of sub is, they never mm. use it to describe whatever's the opposite of sub the Sahara. I what you mean, yeah. It's true. Right? Yeah. If you're going to say North Africa, then say Southern Africa. Or if you want to say Africa North of the Sahara, say that. And then say Africa South of the Sahara. But if you're mm. going to say Sub-Saharan Africa, well, what's the opposite of sub? You don't use it because you don't care because you're in love with the word sub. Sub means below, underneath. And that's what they mean when they call us sub-Saharan, below. We are below them. But they're not true Egyptians because if they were true Egyptians, the real people, actually, they are true Egyptians. They're not the people of Kemet. The people of Kemet were not Egyptians. That's the mind fuck. That's the mind game. That's the mind fucking. As long as you remember that, when they say, I don't even use the term ancient Egyptian. I'll say so-called ancient Egyptian. Okay? The people of Tashemu. The people of Upper Kemet. That's where that culture came from. And they got it from the people in the Sudan. And it was a complex of Saharan and Sudanese mix. That's what you see in Egypt. 